Okay. I think we're set. All right. I think that we are live and good to go. So just wanted to uh, welcome everyone. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, today we are going to have go over some advice um, on a successful congressional meeting. Um, both Dan and I are past staffers and we're going to be giving you all the advice that you need for that meeting. So a little bit about us. My name is Megan and I used to work for Congress for about three years, two of which were in my district where I worked on Homeland Security, um, Immigration and the Federal Bureau of Prisons and also one here in DC where I was a legislative correspondent and I worked on legislation related to arts and humanities, animal rights, and science, space, and technology. Hi, I'm Dan. Um, I also was on the Hill, um, had, a, uh, had a portfolio that uh, included a handful of things. Um, and on top of that, I have about eight years of experience um, in the executive branch as well. Um, so kind of bringing uh, both of those into, uh, into this event. Um, also, I've I've uh, been involved in nonprofits on both the membership side and the staff side. So uh, just just uh, kind of have both of those perspectives as well. So we're gonna we're gonna start off with uh, just a quick overview of uh, the role of the ALA Washington office, um, specifically how we can help uh, you folks out um, when you're when you're setting up meetings. Um, generally, though, the for, the role of the American Library Association Washington office um, includes informing the government of the needs and concerns of the library community, providing library supporters with the most up-to-date information on government actions and proposals, uh, building coalitions with Washington-based groups, and developing grassroots networks to further library interests. Um, but our first point here, first and foremost, we are a resource for you folks. Um, that being said, we can only help if we know what you what you guys need help with. So please ask. Um, our second point, just some of the resources we can provide include um, one pagers, just write ups of, of bills or programs, um, staff contact information for our advocates, uh, congressional schedules. So, you know, when they're home or when they're in D.C., uh, we can also provide bill summaries. Um, overview of legislation um, and, uh, and, and a whole lot more. So you, you let us know what you need. Um, and then fi final point here, if you're looking for advice, ask. Um, if you wanna do a trial run before you have a meeting, we're here for you, so, so reach out. Um, you know, ultimately we, we kinda want you to view us the, the same way you'd view your lawyer or your accountant. Um, you know, we spend all day, every day <laughs> uh, doing government relations, so we're here to, here to help you achieve the, the, the organization's achievable goals. Awesome, thanks Dan. Uh, so let's go over a little bit of steps to take before your meeting. So I think the first question is of course, who should you re reach out to to schedule this meeting with a member of Congress or their staff? So that is actually a really simple one, it's the scheduler. So the scheduler has one of the toughest job on the Hill by far. Um, not only are they in charge of the members schedule, but also serve as the liaison for staff, the public, and other members of Congress. So the point being is they're going to be the best people to um, put you in contact with the appropriate staffer for who to meet with. So uh, I guess now we can go on and uh, talk a little bit more about, so now you know who to contact, what should you say in that initial email? So the first point is, is that um, you are actually more likely to have a meeting with a member if you have constituents with you. So if you do have constituents that are gonna be attending that meeting, it's really important that you let the scheduler know that first and foremost, because that's gonna be a determination of what type of meeting you're going to be having either with the member themselves or with a staffer and actually to be to have a meeting directly with a staffer is um, sometimes preferred um, mm -hmm. to get your message across but we'll go a little mm -hmm. bit more into depth about that later um, 
So the second point is you definitely want to include the topics that you'll be discussing during your meeting. Now, this doesn't have to be really in-depth um, you know, information about the topics that you'll be covering, but it just to give you a give the scheduler a brief overview of what you'll be saying. So, for example, if it's just a general meeting or just a general meet and greet, um, they may choose to have the arts and humanities staffer or the education staffer meet with you. But if you're actually planning to talk a little bit more about appropriations or library funding, then it's good for them to know that so that they can make sure that they include a staffer that's familiar with those issue areas. I'll give you an example, actually, Dan and I were on the Hill um, a couple weeks ago, and we in our initial meeting let them know that this was just a primary meet and greet, but we also said that we wanted to talk a little bit about appropriations. And so we had requested the meeting originally with a staffer that um, deals with arts and humanities. But when we got there, um, to our surprise, and we were really excited about that, is that they brought in their appropriations staffer. That way we could have a really um, well-developed and good conversation um, with their staff. So that's just something to keep in mind. And the third point is that you want to include a range of dates and time that you're available to, um, to meet. So just to give you a rough idea, this, a scheduler can get anywhere from 500 work-related emails a day, most of which are actually meeting requests for not only the staff, but for the member themselves as well. So um, all of that information um, comes in at once. And of course, you want to make sure that yours stands out. So the way that you can do that is by including that range of dates and times so that the scheduler has a concrete idea of when you can meet with the member. For example, if you put yourselves in their shoes, um, you have organization XYZ who's saying, you know what, we can meet with the member at any time that's convenient to them. Then you have another email that's coming in that's saying, we can meet with a member of the staff anytime within this month, um, and we're also available between this time and this time. Well, more than likely, that meeting is going to be prioritized because now it's more immediate. Now the scheduler has a better idea of how to arrange uh, the member's schedule around that meeting as well. So those are just um, some advice for you about um, about before the meeting and that initial email that you send. And remember, if we're looking at the house, even the house, um, every every member in the house has about 700,000 constituents and every constituent is just as important. So it's uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of correspondence incoming. So just, uh, you know, um, make sure that make sure that you you stand out, but also understand if it takes them a, a, a little bit for a turnaround. That's that's completely normal. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Um, so we're going to go on to our next point. So meeting with a member or staffer. So um, as this mentions that, of course, everyone wants to definitely meet with a member of Congress. And it's very important that the member of Congress hears from their constituents, your patrons. Um, but I think for some of these meetings, it actually is more beneficial if you meet with one of their staffers that's a subject matter expert on that particular area that you of the issues that you want to discuss. Um, for example, when I was with my member office, again, I was arts and humanities. I also dealt with Homeland Security. So whenever we had a meeting, my member looked to me to be able to really support that meeting with my subject matter expertise. And so I had to make sure that I knew everything about the topic in order to speak eloquently about the issue. So when you have these meetings, if you have the opportunity to meet with a staffer, then you are meeting with the subject matter expert in that office. And they're really the people that are helping to drive the legislative agenda. So if your interest, if they, um, if you pique their interest, then more than likely the member is going to hear more about those specific issues. And if you do, uh, that being said, if you do get a meeting with a member, uh, be sure to get a picture and tag tag both the member and us on social media. If we're um, part of this is just raising the profile of libraries and uh, what we can do and uh, showing that we are out there and, and active and engaged. Um, and so, so if you do meet with the member, then get a picture. And even if you don't, still still send a thank you, tagging them and us on social media. Yeah, thank yous are really important. And we'll go over that a little bit more too with um, later on in the webinar. Um, so our next point is actually, we're gonna go over the day before your meeting. So what should you do 
the evening before you actually meet um, with your member of Congress or their staff. So you want to confirm your meeting with the scheduler or the staffer. Again, if you've already made contact with the staff member, um, meaning the scheduler has put you in contact with the person who um, you're going to be having that meeting with, then follow up with them. However, if you're following, if you're going to be meeting with the member of Congress, make sure that you um, correspond with the scheduler. As mentioned, a lot is going on. Um, the member probably will have about five or six other meetings directly after yours. So as long as you can um, uh, make sure that you keep them in the loop, the better. Um, so when you send this initial um, confirmation of the email, um, confirmation email, you're going to want to include, of course, the date, the time, the place. It's always good to um, reconfirm all of that information. And you also want to have an updated list of who will be in your meeting. Um, and it's very important that you actually kind of keep these meetings um, small, unless specifically asked by the staff member or if the member of Congress is expecting to see more than you know, a couple people. And really the reason behind that is that when you have your meeting with only a couple of people, it's easier to have a, a back and forth conversation. I know when I was a staffer, um, I had meetings that were one-on-one -on -one or it was me and three other people. And those are really good conversations because we could have, we could go back and forth as opposed to a meeting that I had. I remember there was like 25 people in the office mm -hmm. and it was very overwhelming, at least for me as a staffer because if you're nervous, just imagine that staffer is gonna be 20 times more nervous because now they're in charge of all of the other people that are in that office. So it's just really important that you keep an updated list so that they know um, who's gonna be attending the meeting. And, and you know, this obviously varies by, by uh, meeting, by member, by constituent. Exactly. Uh, three, is a, three is a decent number. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I understand, and this goes for both uh, at, the, at the district and, um, and in DC. Um, but you know, a little bit of flexibility is, is, is reasonable, but three is a good number. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, so the next point is you're going to want to send all supporting documentation in your email. What that means is the one pagers, um, or really any points that you're going to be talking about some supporting documents that you're going to bring up, you're going to bring up during your meeting. Um, if you send those beforehand, it gives the staffers ample time to review the topics that will be discussed and it'll allow for more in-depth dialogue during your meeting. Our next point is gonna be map out the commute. Congressional offices are extremely confusing to get to. I was there um, for a year on the Hill, but I had been working for Congress for three years and I had been up to DC multiple times and I'd still get lost. I, I could visit an office the day before and I'd still get lost on how to get there. Rayburn House Office Building is very confusing. Um, so just keep that in mind that it's kind of confusing to get to all of these buildings. Um, some of the numbers don't coincide with the actual floors and things like that. So um, just make sure that you map that out beforehand. Also make sure that you account for about five to 10 minutes at security. So build that time into your travel time for when you go to these meetings. There will definitely be, there might be a group right before you that um, it's a school group and they're meeting the member of Congress. I've seen this before where there's about 50 of them and they're going into the entrance that you need to get into. And you are about two minutes um, till your meeting or three minutes until your meeting and you're stuck in the line for 15 minutes. So just keep that in mind that those, those um there's about five to ten minutes for security all right and uh now now here here we are at the big day of the meeting uh so i guess the first point is if you're uh what to do if you're running late um which leads us to the second point don't don't be late um you know and after all as we discussed you you mapped out the commute um you know where you're going and uh you reached out to us to to help you find it because i understand these buildings can be they can be a maze but but uh do whatever you can to not be late and uh so the next point um if you have meetings scheduled it is a bit of a walk between the house and the senate um and you would have to go through security again um so so try to set them up on one side and then Set, set, set up your house meetings first and then your Senate meetings afterwards. And I understand that sometimes it's not all, that's not always easy. Um, but again, feel free to reach out to us and, uh, you know, we'll certainly, certainly do what we can to help you get set up. 
But uh, and then finally, um, if tardiness is unavoidable, then reach out to that point of contact you have in the office as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Let them know that um, that you're going to be a few minutes late due to circumstances beyond your control, be it a hang up at security, mm -hmm. uh, bad traffic, a fire in the metro, um, any of the above. Um, because, you know, ultimately, a lot of these uh, staffers and certainly the members, um, they will have a lot of back to back meetings. So even five minutes late to uh, one meeting that can kind of push that last meeting um, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And if you have a member, you know, they they might have to hurry up and run to go vote mm -hmm. um, or or it, it just uh, it can really throw a monkey wrench. I, I believe members schedules are typically blocked out in about 15 minute segments. They are there from time to time and every member office is different, yeah. but um, you can have a member who blocks off 15 minutes for meetings in 15 minute incre increments, 30 minutes, or to an hour, you never know. Um, but more than likely it'll be around 15 minutes. So if you're at least five minutes late, that's gonna be a significant time into your meeting that um, will be cut off. And I think more than anything, I, I think it's very, very important, especially if you're meeting with a member of Congress, that you keep the scheduler updated. Even if you are downstairs in line at security, it is so important that you let that scheduler know because more than likely they're going to be standing at their desk waiting for you um, so that they can make sure that they keep the member on schedule. As Dan had mentioned earlier, a lot of these meetings are in between voting series. And so if a member has to go vote, they're gonna unfortunately have to go vote. So just make sure that you keep everyone um, up to date with what's going on. Exactly. Uh, so the meeting itself, um, first point, the meeting begins as soon as you walk through that door. So uh, before you get there, go ahead, use the bathroom, shake out, shake, shake it all out. Um, but as soon as that door opens, that meeting has started. Um, uh, second point, always, always, always be nice to the staff um, and don't talk about other offices. Even if you walked out of a meeting that um, didn't go well mm -hmm. or, or maybe there's a bit of an ideological difference between you and the uh, office that you met with, um, that will keep that, keep that outside. Um, you know, you're, you're there to meet with, meet with these folks and, uh, and that's, that's what's important. Um, you know, you have to, you have to keep in mind, um, Congress has about a 17% ish approval rating. Um, so imagine having to go to work every day and just getting, uh, well, working at a place that has a, approval rating in the high teens. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a tough job. And um, that that person at the front desk may have spent the morning on the phone with um, very passionate, uh, very passionate constituents that that certainly uh, gave gave them, uh, let them know everything that they were thinking. And so, you know, a, a smile and some light, convers pleasant conversation. Um, it means a lot. These are hardworking people. Yeah, and also just keep in mind, um, and this actually would happen from time to time in my old office is when, you know, people would come in, they talk about their meeting beforehand, they'll talk about how, you know, they're actually really excited to um, go to lunch or which is fine, totally understandable. But um, basically, they, they have a conversation amongst themselves, like they're really excited for this day to be over. Um, now, and they would say it's just really interesting because they would say that right in in the front office. Um, and it could be because, you know, either the staff wasn't looking um, at them, but just know that even though they're not looking directly at you, um, they're listening to you. A lot of congressional offices are very, very small. And mm -hmm. at least um, for some offices, the chief of staff and the scheduler could be in the front office just divided by a little partition. So um, just because someone's not in the front or they went to the back to go and tell a staff member that you're there, um, just to keep that in mind. And then a uh, kind of final point here is that that person working the front desk may very well be the person you're meeting with, mm -hmm. um, which, which again, we, uh, you know, we, 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 we're nice to everyone. We treat everyone with respect, but, mm -hmm. but it's, it's also important to realize that that, that person might be the, uh, might be the person that you're, you're holding your meeting with. So. Yeah. And more, I think this actually, um, another story, I guess, of mine is, or example of this is that I was having a meeting with um, an organization. I was in the back and um, I was talking to one of my colleagues and they let me know that they were coming up to the front. I was actually collecting some of my 
um, I came to the front collecting some of my paperwork so that we can go and um, you know have this meeting together and you know uh, a couple comments were made like this is only a staffer we're not actually meeting with the meet the member you know and things like that and it was very awkward for me uh, to to let them know hi I'm, I'm that staffer so just keep that in mind um, that staff members are all over the place and um, even if they're in the front they also probably have a lot of legislative issue areas as well all right so we go into the meeting uh first and foremost have a plan and stick to the plan um and it doesn't have to be a a detailed to the second agenda um but as we've mentioned um before the meeting where when we reach out we're going to say hey we'd like to talk about um a given issue area be it appropriations or broadband or or a good thing that a uh, library in the district has done. Um, regardless, go in, have a plan, and uh, make sure you stick to it. Uh, next point is to write up an agenda before the meeting, assign talking points to every member of your party. Um, bonus points for, <laughs> for tailoring it to each meeting. Um, for example, if you have a, if you're meeting with a member on the appropriations committee, maybe focus a little bit more on that. If you're meeting with a member on um, uh, help committee, uh, maybe focus uh, a little bit more on, uh, say, IMLS reauthorization, and and this is this is kind of bonus points if you if you want to tailor it, but but ultimately make sure you're going in there, make sure you have talking points, you know who's going to say what, and uh, stay on track. Next point, um, be prepared to answer questions about your talking points. Um, now these questions may not go terribly deep and most likely the member or the staff is looking to see specifically how your issue or program uh, affects the district and affects people in the district. Um, I will say though, occasionally you'll get that person who, who helped to write the bill that you're talking about and they'll have a, a level of subject matter expertise that is just second to none. And um, which is okay. They're they're not trying to sharpshoot you with any questions. Mm -hmm. um, typically, they're just trying to figure out how they can best help and and how this affects the district. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that um, no staffer is going to expect or go in with all of these very hard hitting questions and ask you all those, expecting you to have those answers then and there, especially for first time um, advocates going to the Hill. I feel like that may be a perception, but that's that's not the case at all. And it's completely fine for you to say, if you don't have those answers, you know what? I don't have those answers right now, but I will make sure that I get them, uh, I get those for you. I had many meetings that were like that and um, they turned around, followed up with me and they gave me the answers that I needed. And um, it was very impressive to me. Exactly. They're, you know, they're not there. It's not a hearing. They're not there to grill you. Um, you, you know, they're just really just trying to see how, how they can best help, uh, how the member can best help mm -hmm. and um, how it affects, how it affects, uh, you know, we the people. Mm -hmm. um, and final point is uh, make sure you rehearse. And again, this doesn't have to be a big drawn out thing. Even if you're just walking from point A to point B mm -hmm. um, with other members of your party there, just bounce, uh, bounce the points off of each other. You know, hey, I'll talk about appropriations, mm -hmm. Megan will talk about broadband mm -hmm. or, or uh, w whatever, just, uh, you know, make sure you do a quick rehearsal. And again, we're here to help. So if you want to bounce anything off of us, feel free to give us a call. Mm -hmm. um, so as we mentioned, you know, Dan and I are past staffers. So we we're on the opposite side of the meeting table. So um, when we had our first advocate um, meeting, it was, it was really interesting for us to be on the opposite side. And so we, we did rehearse and it helped a lot. And so it's completely fine for you all to, to do that. Yeah. You know, it's a good way. It, it gets the, gets the team's chemistry down and, and, uh, yeah, so we'll move on. Uh, so the meeting itself, we're starting to get into the weeds a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, we want to make sure that when we're talking, we, bring up why libraries care um, and ideally be as, as specific as possible. Hey, we care about this because this affects X program that our library uses or relies on. Um, you know, IMLS funding, it's, uh, it's used to leverage, federal funding is used to leverage state uh, matching 
which uh, you know contributes to the local funding. So uh, just be specific how it affects your library, um, especially in the district or state. Um, and if you need anything with that, please let us know. We we're glad to we're glad to help, um, especially with some of the larger numbers looking at uh, kind of appropriations. Um, the second point you should be focused on is why does Congress care? And and this is kind of a one-two punch. First, we you know certainly want to have evidence and hard numbers, and um, that's kind of what the Washington office is certain is definitely here to help you with. Um, but also stories from the district that the kind of case studies they they really go very very far because it's one thing to say, hey, this budget item does X impacts Y, um, but it's it means a whole lot when you're speaking to a member saying, hey. I'm from your district, and this is this is how a given program is affecting us. Mm -hmm. um, that means a lot, and especially libraries as anchor institutions in the community, um, we can have some really, really compelling stories. So, so that's kind of point number two. Um, and then finally, uh, stick to your talking points. Keep them simple, and and stick to them. Um, <laughs> I, I I know that uh, both Megan and I, I'm sure, have been in a few meetings on on the receiving side where where it starts off uh, speaking about a federal program and then maybe maybe goes into and also the potholes on Main Street are and uh, which is a very, very important and valid thing. But that's not make sure it's something that a member of Congress can can directly address. Yeah. And I think these meetings, um, especially when when you go up and you have these initial meetings with congressional staff that those meetings serve as, again, initial meetings for you to. Um, have a very brief conversation to lead into further conversation later on. It's really so that congressional staff and members of Congress can see you as subject matter experts in all areas of um, legislative uh, library initiatives. So um, you really want them, you don't want to have to give them all that information at once, just the information that they most definitely need that would lead into a further conversation later on. Exactly. Uh, and then... The meeting, we want to conclude with our ask. So uh, next point would be, you know, hey, we something direct, something specific. We want you to vote yes on House Res whatever, or we ask that you vote no on Senate bill, uh, whatever. Um, the very, very specific or next point. Um, or if it's, hey, can you please come visit our library or our facility when you're back in the district? Um, but at, at the at the end of the meeting, we definitely want to have a, a specific ask. And I know that Megan and I have both probably been in meetings where um, you go and there are a number of great points that that are brought to your attention. Mm -hmm. But there's not they don't really walk away with an ask. And mm -hmm. so you're not exactly sure. Well, OK, what do I do now? Um, so be direct. It's OK. Yeah. For me as a staffer or a past staffer, at least, um, it was very helpful when I had um, an organization that went into my meeting that said, gave me all the information that I needed to be able to pass along to my member. And then at the very end say, this is what we would like you to do. Very plain, very simple. And it's totally, totally fine for you to be, say exactly that. Vote yes on this bill, vote no on this bill. Cause it helps me better eloquently tell my member, this is what they want from us. Exactly. And you know, a successful meeting is, is a meeting where where the issue has been eloquently but succinctly portrayed um, and it results in action on the office's end and follows and uh, follow up on your end. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess the last point is one that I, I had an old boss um, kind of gave as the rules of briefing, be brief, be bold and be gone. Um, go in there, um, shine as, as I know everyone will, have your ask and then uh, move on. Okay, so we're gonna we're wrapping up here and we're gonna go um, into after the meeting. So what is the first thing that you need to do after your meeting? It's going to be following up. You most definitely, definitely, definitely need to follow up um, with the staff member that you met with or with the member. Um, more than likely it'll be a message will go through to the staff member um, if you're meeting with a member as well. So make sure that you follow up, you include any supporting documentation or more importantly, also answers to questions that were made during your meeting. So if they asked you specifically about how do these statistics or how do these numbers affect my constituency? How does this program 
um, you know, affect my district. If you have those numbers, if you have those stories, whatever supporting documentation you have, you want to make sure that you follow up with that. Again, this is to reaffirm with that, that office that you are the subject matter expert when it comes to that specific legislative issue um, related to your public library, your libraries, period. Um, so just make sure that you let them know that, or you follow up and you give them all that information. So also make sure that you let us know how your meeting went. We here in the Washington office want to make sure that um, we have all the information and we gave you all the information that you needed. If we need to provide more information or um, more, if you have an idea about how we can better perfect um, the information that we give you, please let us know um, what that is. And also make sure that you pass along any uh, information that you receive from the meeting, such as your members seem interested in getting more involved with library initiatives, or they have a relative who's a librarian, it's really good for us to note that so that we, in case that office reaches out to us, then we can know um, what that information is. It, it helps us help them and it helps us help you. So this is our, um, one of our last slides at least. This is the in additional information part. So this is the miscellaneous catch-all slide, which I actually am really excited to talk about. So um, these are basically the random things that may come up in your meeting that you are like, what is going on? The first being your meeting is in a hallway. <laughs> um, so contrary to popular belief, congressional offices, particularly those in the house size, house side are relatively small and they may have one mating room that doubles as the member's office, the lunch room, the conference room, the staff conference room. So um, if the member is in their office or there's another meeting taking place, it's common that meetings are moved either to the hallway or downstairs. Um, so that is not a reflection of the importance of your meeting to that office. Um, it's just because there's no space. Um, and I had many meetings in the hallway as well. So just, just know that for this, this is not you, it's them. Yeah, be flexible. Um, sometimes the meetings will be in the member's office. Mm -hmm. They could be in a in in the back office where people are working. Uh, sometimes I've been, you know, sometimes they're in the front office. Um, mm -hmm. or, and again, or the hallway or the Dunkin' Donuts. Um, <laughs> there, there's a lot of options, and it's it's not you. It's just um, it's just a matter of coordination. Um, and they're working with, well, believe it or not, relatively limited resources. So. Mm -hmm. So the next is the interrupted meeting. So let's say, for example, you are in your meeting with um, your member of Congress or their staff, and all of a sudden they pick up their phone and they just start um, emailing or texting. That's totally normal. That happened. That's part of the culture of the Hill. Um, or let's say, for example, your meeting was interrupted by another staffer that just popped their head in the, the room and asked a question. Um, just know that this is very common on the Hill. It happens all the time. Let's say, for example, you're meeting with a staffer and that member, is, the member of Congress is actually in a committee hearing and they need some statistics relatively quickly and the staff member that you are meeting with is the subject matter expert on that issue area. So just know that that's common um, and it's not, again, a reflection of the importance of the meeting. So the last one is probably my favorite, uh, the Capitol Bells. So the Capitol Bell system. So um, from time to time, especially this is especially for people who have never been onto the hill, um, you'll be in a meeting where you may just be walking around the hill and all of a sudden you'll hear a bunch of buzzers going off. Um, and uh, they're called the bells, but it's not really a bell. It's like a little buzzer. And um, you'll hear those going off. Sometimes there's like 15 at once. And what the Capitol Bell system is, is whether you're in the House or the Senate chamber, um, I'm sorry, whether you're in the, either the House or the Senate, the bells are indicators that there is some legislative action going on in the House or Senate chambers. So it, the, they actually serve to let the members of Congress and their staff know that need, they need to get down to the chamber floor. So if that's for votes, if that's for you know speeches or whatever that may be, that's what those bells are for. Now, if you're in a meeting with a member of Congress or their staff and they don't immediately address what the bells are, that's probably because we are so we were so used to it by that time. Um, I never would even hear the bells anymore, but that's so members uh, can know that they need to go vote. And so after those bells go off and 
um, the scheduler comes in and interrupts the meeting or the member says I have to go or the staff member is like, I have to go make sure that I update the member on the votes. Um, just know that that's normal as well. That's sure. what those are. If the member gets up and in some cases literally runs to go vote. That's uh... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they do. Sometimes they really do have to go run to go vote. Um, so that's all of our information that we have for you. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this webinar. Please let us know if you have any specific questions for us. We'd love to follow up in any way um, that we can. Again, we're here to be a resource for you all. So um, if you have any specific questions, um, please let us know. Yep. And yep, th that's our contact information. Thank you for tuning in and uh, we're here to help. Thank you. All right, take care.